Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce, and in this Einstein Analytics SQL Basics video, we're going to be covering the different SQL that can be generated by compare tables, especially through the windowing function, and how this applies to learning SQL from what we can create in the UI. So the compare table is one of the most powerful weapons in your clicks not code arsenal, allowing you to perform complex calculations on your data without any uh, transformations in the data flow and without writing any complex code. So what place does this have in a SACWIL basics video? Well, simple explanation for that. Not only will it allow us to build complex calculations, but it also allows us to build up some base code for developing our SACWIL uh, without necessarily having to write every single line by ourselves. So if I go to my DTC opportunity data set, uh, I want to get a three month rolling average of amount group by account type. So first I'm going to grab my account type as grouping and then I'm going to group it by close date year month, switch my aggregation to sum of amount. And then I'm going to clone the column by hitting edit and the plus sign and I'm going to select my sliding window function. This is what's going to allow me to iterate row over row and compare one row to the next, to the next, to the next, etc. Now, because I want a three month rolling average, I don't want it to just reach back one month. I want it to reach back three because uh, we have one row per month. And I want my reset group to be account type because if I don't do that, it's going to think that the prior row for partner 2016 uh, May is going to be customer 2018 February. And I want to say no, at this point, we start over again at the beginning. So and I do have a number of different functions that are available here. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. So close, hide the column that I don't necessarily need. And when I switch to timeline, well, there it is. Very simple clicks, not code. This is a three month rolling average of opportunity amount grouped by account type. So let's take a look at the SACWIL that this has created. So I'm in my SACWIL editor here and I'm going to zoom in on this guy. And we're going to put the windowing function on its own line here. So it's just a little easier to read. And this is what's actually going on here. And uh, I hate to do it, but I'm going to be the guy that just reads the docs on it. Um, so what do we've got windowing function, projection expression over a row range partitioned by a reset group, ordered by an order clause projected as a label. So what do we actually have? Our windowing function is just going to be average. It's the most simple basic one we've got. Our projection expression is we want to the, the you know, the, the aggregate that we're trying to perform comparison on, that's going to be the sum of column A, which is our opportunity amount. And over, we're saying, okay, over what rows, because we're iterating across multiple rows in our uh, projection here. So we've got one row per account type uh, year month and we're going to go three rows back to the current row uh, and then we're going to partition by the account type so that means when you get to a new account type I want you to start back over at zero and then order by account type close date year close date month project that as column B so one thing to be aware of is because we're partitioning by account type uh, when I get to customer 2016 uh, of April, that's a new account type. So there's no three rows back that I can go. There is no uh, rows before this. So the average rolling three months of the first month is just going to be itself. The second one is going to average the first two months. And then only when we get to the third do we actually have a true three month rolling average. Let's take a look at the docs again. So our windowing function was average. Our projection expression was sum of amount over a row range of three back to the current partitioned by our account type ordered by account type and closed date year month projected as B. So I'm going to strongly recommend that as you explore windowing functions, really keep coming back to this doc because it is super, super solid. They nailed it on this one. So uh, there's different requirements that we're going to have and a really good explanation of what you can and can't do. So it's right here that it does take uh, open ended date range or open ended row ranges and what any given thing is going to return. Uh, what does zero mean? What does one mean? 
then it talks about reset groups, uh, notes on what won't work, notes on how to do it with co-groupings, um, a number of examples. And then if we get down to, so this table right here is actually really, really, really solid. It gives you an example of all of the different uh, windowing functions that you perform on an extremely simple data table and what the output of that would be. So for example, the difference between rank and dense rank is, uh, you know, if I've got a tie, is the guy after the tie going to be number four or number three? So I go one, two, I got a tie for second. Is the person after that going to be fourth or third? And that's the difference between dense ranking and ranking is that uh, ranking will uh, skip numbers on ties and dense ranking will, you know, just go to number three. So another really cool thing that we can do with the SQL uh, windowing options that are exposed through the compare table UI is going to be this period over period option. Uh, I must be using at least one uh, date grouping in order for this to work. Uh, I can choose which of my date groupings I want to use, the column that I want to derive my source data from, and whether I want to return this as a percentage of change or unit change. And really cool thing is when you when you got percentage of change here, uh, it's the uh, the usual uh, I believe it's a minus b over b formula, where b uh, basically says go look one row back, and then we do a minus b over b. So let's apply that, and this is what we see. We see well, you know what? Uh, how did this month compare to the prior row? And it looks like it was an increase of 138.62 so let's take a look at the SQL that that actually created and it's going to look like a lot but it really isn't it's stuff that you've already seen here so we've got some a we already know what that is we're just saying give me the value that's being returned by the column to my left and then minus all of this right here well this is really just part of the windowing function that we just did before it's not even the whole thing uh, it's just most of it. And then we divide it by itself again. So it might look like a lot of code, but this is all code that you've already seen. And it's all code that you can get comfortable with through the UI and through these auto-generated examples that are built around very common business use cases. So let's take a look at another common business use case and the SQL that it's going to produce. In my first sum of amount column, I'm filtering by close date is two years ago. So that's going to be 2016. Uh, please note, I don't have any data for January, February, March. And then uh, for my second column, I'm filtering by close date in 2017. And for my third column, I'm just doing a pretty simple calculation on them. I'm doing B minus A over A to kind of get a percentage of change. It's pretty similar to the, the last one that we did, but it's year over year instead of month over month. So let's take a look at the SQL that that creates. So the way this query actually runs is by uh, first loading up Q equals load opportunity. That brings our opportunity data into memory. And then we split it into two streams. For more information on multiple streams and stream identifiers, please check out the co-group video in this series. Then uh, we group our data together. Uh, we're going to go full on QA and then add QB to that as well. And then we're going to use colesque statements to ensure that we're always returning something. So colesque QA or QB basically says, go and look at stream A, and if I do have an account type, return it. And if not, give me QB's account type. Um, otherwise, if there was business in customer 2017 but not customer 2016, we wouldn't see those rows. So that's the purpose of that colesque statement there. For more information, check out the video on colesque. As we march through the rest of the query, I'm basically going to tell you to look at other videos in this series for more information. So we're going to conclude this episode with a little bit of best practices advice. Always ask yourself first for any business riddle, can I solve this with the compare table? If no, can I solve this with the data flow? And only if no, then resort to SQL. And once you have chosen to use SQL, ask yourself, can I use either a compare table or a calculation in the data flow to uh, accelerate my SQL development process? This will save you hours and hours and hours of development time. And I cannot stress uh, this enough. Always use the right tool for the job. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
And if you did, please like, subscribe, tell a friend, and endorse me on LinkedIn for stubborn determination. And as always, thanks for watching.